Hello Vikings and welcome to a brand new series here on my channel. This is the Valheim Guide, a complete immersive experience of the Valheim game. And whether you're a complete beginner or a bit of an expert, there will be things in this series that will be for you. All kinds of obscure tips, tutorials, big farms, big builds, and a really immersive experience of the Valheim game. So if you are hyped for this series, then do like and subscribe on this video, as the more people who do that is a better gauge for me as to how popular this is. And of course, the more popular something is, the more you guys are going to get of it. Now, right here we are in the world that you're going to see develop in today's video, but let's go back to the very start and see how all this happened. So, the first thing you're going to want to do is hit start new game and make yourself up a nice new character. You can, of course, call yourself anything you want. I'm just going to call myself Kaizen Guide so I know that's my guide character. You can hold left click to rotate this guy around and have a look at the different hairstyles and stuff that you want to choose. I think I'm going to go for a ponytail and a nice Viking beard, nice and uh, the black hair look as well. There's a good little look there and there's our Viking ready to go. So then we can go ahead and hit done. Now before you start your world, one thing you might want to do is just go into your settings and change around any settings that are relevant to you, anything you want to change. Um, now I have in the past talked about how vegetation quality being on low can make it easier to see items that are on the floor, but we're going for the full immersive experience today, so we're going to keep that on high, hit OK, and now I'm going to start a game with the Kaizen Guide, hit start, and then go for a new world. Now you can call your world anything you want, I'm just going to call it Kaizen Guide so I know that's my guide world. And then we need the seed. Now the seed, you can leave random. They do just a random one for you. Or you can go online and find seeds and choose one uh, if you want to have a certain seed. What I'm going to do is just put the seed in right here. So I think I'll just go like Kaizen H&H1 &H for series one of the Kaizen guide. If you want to follow along at home, then you just put that seed in. So I'm going to hit done and we're going to hit start. And we're going to get started in our new world. So day one in Valheim, when you're starting out, is really about three things. That is food, getting a bed to sleep through the first night, and setting up your base. So everything that we're about to do here is going to be to that end in order to get through the first day successfully. So the first thing to do is go to the redstone right here and press E when you get up to it. And it gives you Ikthra's location. And as we can see, it's actually really close to the spawn. So that's quite handy. It's going to be a good location for us. Uh, the next thing to do is r run around like this and just pick up anything you see on the floor around here. There will be a lot of stuff around the spawn for you to pick up straight away. And you want to come behind these stones as well. Uh, because as you can see there, you often find raspberries and mushrooms and stuff behind them as well. So there we go. We've got some raspberries right there. Any mushrooms or anything for us? Maybe not. Maybe over here. But the point is, you definitely... Oh, there we go. We've got a couple here. So you definitely want to go and check that out and get yourself off to a good start. Because then what you can do is actually eat the raspberries and the mushrooms to instantly increase your health and your stamina, which is going to be very useful to you early on in the game. I will be streaming Valheim often on both YouTube and Twitch. The Twitch link is in my video description. If you want to keep posted on all my YouTube streams and also all my videos and stuff, then please do subscribe for more. So the next thing to really decide is what direction you're going to head in. Now, if I press M, you'll see that uh, where I've been flown into the map, I've got some information. So I can see we're in the meadows right now. Heading up this way, there is a, uh, I can see the mountain biome right there, just a little touch of it. I think there was a black forest here somewhere. Yeah, just black forest there as well. So I've got a little bit of information around that. Now, the black forest biome should be avoided at the start of this game, as should the mountain, because otherwise you will probably die if you head into there on day one. So uh, yeah, avoid that if you can. Now, the Ikthor location being over here means we should probably just head up towards that location. Now, we can see that on the minimap by using the period and the comma keys to zoom in and out of our minimap in the top right there. And then we can see which direction we're heading in. So we want to go roughly in this direction, but I can already see some awesome uh, stuff for us. So these raspberries right here, obviously, there's quite a few of them. And I want to make a note of them being here. So I'm going to do a little dot there on my minimap with a double left click and hit R to enter them in. Instantly, you can left click again to cross out or uncross the little marker you've made, or right click if you want to get rid of it completely. Now, I do recommend that you mark down things of interest, so raspberries, mushrooms, things like that that will respawn throughout the game, as uh, you will need a lot of them throughout the game and they can be useful. Now, as it happens, these have actually spawned right next to an abandoned house. When you see these, it's always worth being careful when you go in, but exploring them. The reason we're being careful is because sometimes they'll have a beehive in them, and the bees can attack you and do a bit of damage to you early game. I'll show you that later on once I find an abandoned house that does have a beehive in it. But for now, we're going to make a bit of a beeline for that little like for location and try and find somewhere to sleep on day one that is going to be near there. So as I'm venturing over, I just want to talk a little bit about what the Valheim Guide series is going to be. So it's basically a bit like a Let's Play series, but with a twist. We're going to be talking a lot in this series about the game mechanics, and we're also going to be doing a lot of big builds and tutorials and some big farms and stuff like that. So it's not just for beginner people at uh, Valheim. You'll learn stuff even if you've played this game 
game a lot, hopefully. Um, and if not, hopefully at least find it entertaining. Um, but if you are new here, then there should be tons that you will learn, as I'm going to share with you just about every tip I have in the game as I go along. And we're not really playing this game where it's just a case of we want to beat the five bosses and then be done, because I think Valheim has a lot more to offer in that regard, especially when it comes to building. So this will be a long, ongoing series if it gets a lot of support. So if you guys want to show this series some support, then please do like and subscribe, and it will give me a good gauge as to how many people are interested in this series being a long, ongoing thing. So once you've got yourself six wood, the next thing you want to do is go ahead and make yourself up a nice club, and we can wield that to fight against any enemies we find. You can press R to keep it on your back as you're moving around to uh, move around a bit quicker and stuff, and then press R again to get it back. Now I've seen two boar here, and you definitely want to kill these boar straight away. So if you see boar, you want to go up and kill them. If you see neck, you want to kill those as well. And if you see deer, it's a bit different the way that you kill them, because uh, you have to like sneak up on them. But I'm going to show you that in a minute, and again, you want to kill them. So basically, when you're walking through, you want to kill any animals that you can get your hands on, and you want to mark the locations of anything you see, and you want to pick up everything that you can. That is basically the game plan for uh, day one on your new Valheim world. Okay, so I found another abandoned house here, guys, and that right there is the beehive. Now, we were able to take that down a bit later on in the game, but if you find one this early on, what I recommend you do is just go ahead and mark it on the map. And later on in this episode, I will show you guys how you can safely take down the beehive, because if we go in there now and just start clubbing it, it will start to attack us. Ah, now, uh, a grading has found us, and I want to say you do start this game with a torch. If I press 1 to wield my torch, you'll see the grayling will not come near me, right? It will walk away, and when it gets far enough away, it will throw stones at you, so it can still do damage, but it will not come up to you and actually attack you with like a, a melee attack of its own. So by hitting it with the torch, you'll do damage to it, while still keeping it at a safe distance where it's not really going to damage you, providing you don't let it go far enough away that it's going to throw stones at you. Now, Grados are weak to fire, so by hitting it with that torch, it'll actually burn and it'll do damage to the Grayling uh, whilst it's running away from us. So that's one way of dealing with them early game. And if you find yourself amongst a pack of them, which hopefully you don't if you stay out the Black Forest, but in case that happens, then the torch will be super useful for keeping them all at bay. Okay, so here is our Ikthra location. We've run over to that. And I've actually only just seen this, but there's a house just up here. So finding an abandoned house can be really useful to get through your day one. Let's go in here. And you know what, this is actually perfect. It's so near to Ikthra, which is great. And uh, it's not going to need too much repairing. Plus, there were no bees inside, so that's pretty useful. So what I want to do now is go ahead and make myself up a hammer. And uh, then we're going to wield that hammer, just like this. And start off by making ourselves a workbench. We'll place that down there. And we can actually then repair this house. Because when you find these abandoned houses, they're in a pretty poor state of repair. So you want to repair them, because otherwise when mobs come and attack them, they'll very easily be able to break through your defenses. And what we're going for here is a nice safe house that's going to get us through the first night. Now, this isn't like a final base location or even your starting base location. So you don't need to worry too much about this house. The really, like, the criteria for it is ideally you find yourself a nice abandoned house like this. And they are pretty common, so it's not too difficult to do. And then you can just repair it up like I'm doing right here. Uh, but more importantly, you just want to make sure that if you're building your house from scratch, you're building it somewhere that's nice and safe so that you're going to be able to sleep through night one without too much of an issue. So right now I've only got one wood left, so I'm going to have to go and get myself a lot more wood. Now in order to do this, you can of course pick up branches off the floor. The other thing that you can do is punch these trees here, these very thin trees here. You go ahead and hit them, and after a few hits they will break and give you some wood. Now when you have enough materials, you want to go ahead and craft up the stone axe, so five wood and four stone for that. And then you can use that to chop down these little trees here much quicker. And you can also chop down some bigger trees if you wish. So this is going to be a way that we're going to get all the wood that we need in order to finish the build of the house over there, make our campfire and make our bed so that we can sleep safely through night one. So I'm just finishing up repairing the house here by repairing all the floors inside and any bits that I missed there before. Uh, then what we want to do is go ahead and just finish it off. So what we want to do is get a wooden door and place that wooden door just there. There we go. And the next thing to do is uh, go ahead and get the bed made. So we need eight wood for the bed and we can place that there. Now what you want to do is press E straight away and you've actually set your spawn point there. So now if we die, we're at least going to spawn back here. Now what I'm going to do is collect more wood until I can finish this build. So we're going to finish that off by placing down roof pieces and such. But as you can see, I need more wood in order to finish that. You just want to prioritize getting the bed down though first off because then you can actually set your spawn point there. So I'm just repairing the roof right now, placing these bits in here. It is worth mentioning when you find a structure like this, and as I said before, you need to sort of repair any bits that are there already that aren't quite, you know, looking uh, good. They need a bit of repair. It won't actually cost you any materials to do that. So with this done, uh, what you want to do next is get the fireplace placed down because that needs to be there 
in order that we can sleep. So being outside the house, but that close to the bed is good enough and we will be able to sleep tonight, providing it doesn't rain and put our fireplace out, which I think always on, for, on the, like, the first day, you're not gonna have rain uh, overnight and, and that sort of thing. Uh, but what you can do as well, if you've got the wood to do, it only takes a couple, is just place a bit of a roof piece up on the existing structure like that, and that will actually protect it from the rain. So now we are able to go into this little house here, and we can sleep in order to skip the night. And you'll see we can also rest in here and get our rested buff up, because there is shelter over our heads, and there's a fire nearby. So if I press X and sit down and wait a minute, I'll actually get the rested buff. And there we go, we got the rested buff, and it's 11 minutes, because we have comfort four, with the shelter and the fire and such. Um, and and then if it's late enough, we can go ahead and sleep through our first night safely without all those mobs that spawn at night times as the mobs at night in Valheim are more difficult. So here we are on day two. And what I'm gonna do is uh, wield my uh, hammer and middle mouse click to break down the crafting uh, area, the workbench. You get all the materials back for it, so it's not an issue. And we're gonna move it inside. So we'll see if we squeeze it in here somewhere. It's pretty tight in here, but hey, it's just a very like basic starting area. But now what we can do is use that bench and click this button here to repair all of our items free of charge which is very useful. The next thing that I wanna do actually is make up a nice little chest and in that chest right there, just place anything that I don't currently need. So that's all that stuff there. We'll keep our food on us, of course. And uh, this is where we're at. Now, the next thing that you should prioritize making is the crude bow. You see you need eight leather scraps and 10 wood. Well, from my initial like journey over here and killing the boar and stuff, we have almost enough of the leather scraps. We'll go and have to pick up one more of those and put some wood. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and do that now, whilst also having a little bit of an explore around my area, around my little house. And of course, if you see any neck on the way, like this guy right here, or any boar or deer or whatever, you do wanna be killing them all. Um, but yeah, we're specifically looking for the boar, of course, at the moment. And, uh, and then we'll get some wood as well. So I got pretty lucky and I actually found two leather scraps already from a couple of boar that we killed. So what I'm actually gonna do though is uh, we're gonna go and make that bow soon and then we'll be able to kill the deer quite easily. However, I'm gonna show you guys how you can sneak up on deer and kill them that way too, because you might not get as lucky as I did with the boar. Okay, and right away, it's kind of hard to see because it's foggy, but just up there, there are some deer. So I'm gonna hold down control and that means I can sneak up on them. Now I have my club wielded, but it's on my back. So I'm gonna press R when I get close enough to this deer that I'm sneaking up on to give it a hit. So press R and give it a couple of hits. Okay, only one was needed because we snuck up on it well. So there we go. Sometimes you might need to give it a couple. So you want to be really going for it early on. And boom, we got very lucky as it happens, guys, because we got a deer trophy from it. And our early game goal is to get two deer trophy because that's how many we need to spawn in the first boss, Ikthra. Now, just by chance, I've actually bumped into this little thing right here. Now, if you see a stone structure like this, you see all these stones here in a kind of boat-like shape. It's a little bit difficult to see because of all the trees, but hopefully you can kind of see what I'm saying here with these little stones that are going around in this sort of thing. What you want to do is mark that location. So I'm going to use something different to mark this. And uh, where am I? Here we go. I'll just put like um, TB for treasure boat because there is treasure underneath here. Now, once we kill Ikthar, we'll be able to get ourselves a pickaxe and then we'll be able to come back here and dig up that treasure, which I will show you later on in this series. One of the good things about using different icons as well, guys, is on the right hand side, you'll see these icons. And if I right click a certain type of icon, I can switch them all off. I can then right click again to turn them back on if I want. But it just means you can keep your mini map a lot more organized, which is quite useful little thing to have. So that's why I use different icons for different things. And I recommend that you guys too. Another thing I recommend is to get your hotbar sorted out early on into the game. So for me, I always have my hammer at two, my melee at three, my shield when I have one goes at five, and my sort of current use item goes at four. So right now that's an ax, but it could be anything. And then later on in the game, I get some things up here, but they're a little bit harder to quickly change to. But if you're sort of like chopping down a tree or doing some mining or something, and you quickly need to switch to your melee weapon or your bow, it's a good idea to know exactly where that is and get the muscle memory going early on. Sometimes in Valheim, you get a little bit caught out and it's good to just have those things ready like as soon as you need them without having to like press the wrong button or whatever, particularly when you're against more difficult mobs that you'll encounter later on in the game. So in the lower left-hand corner of the screen right now, you'll see that my mushroom is flashing. So that actually means that I can eat another mushroom. Now you wanna keep an eye on this and as soon as you're able to eat more food, you want to make sure that you do that because you want the HP and the stamina that it gives you. It'll just help you to not die in the game which is quite useful, especially early on. Okay, so now we've got the materials to make up the crude bow. That's exactly what we're going to do straight away. So here we go, uh, prepare all of our stuff, go to the crude bow and craft that one up. 
and boom, there we go. Now we're also going to need some arrows for it. Eight wood, uh, or eight wood, I should say, gives you 20 of the wooden arrows. These are definitely good enough for right now. We will look to upgrade them later on, though. So, been able to make 40 of those up at the moment with the materials we have. Not too bad. We've actually already run out of uh, inventory space. Okay, cool. So uh, now we're going to go out and uh, basically our goal is to get the two deer trophy. Now, I already managed to get one, so I got quite lucky with that. So I only need another one. And then I'm actually able to spawn in Eichfer at that point. The other thing you want to do is uh, kill any seagulls when you see them land in order to get their feathers. Now I'm going to go out and find all this stuff for you guys and show you exactly how to do that. Um, so let's see how that looks once we are actually there. Now, if you find one of these on your travels and it has a lot of boar around it, go up to it and read it. And uh, if you see there, the uh, second paragraph starts, look also to the wild boar who roam. You know you found a really good little spot here for finding more boar. So I'm going to mark that on the map and I'll put in boar like that. Now, not only will you find more boar around this sort of area, but you'll also find boar that are level one and even level two star boar. Now, this can be useful because they will give you more drops per boar. It's also very useful when you come to making a boar farm, which we'll definitely be doing later on in this series. So definitely worth mentioning that and marking that on your maps. Um, because it will be very useful for you. Okay, so we have a deer over there, so I'm going to go ahead and get my bow, and it hasn't seen me yet, so I can just pull the bow back, shoot at it, and kill it, and there we go, guys. That is why it's so much easier and faster than just creeping up to the deer. Also, if you do happen to spook the deer first and it starts to run away, with your bow, you still have a chance of being able to hit it with a good bow shot, whereas if you're just trying to use a club on it and it starts to run away from you, that's pretty much game over at that point. Now, one thing I will say, you can see there's a deer just uh, over there. I'm not sure if you can see through the fog, but you do want to get yourself to a good vantage point before you take a shot at it because after you shoot at it once if you miss it will get spooked and then run away and be much more difficult to kill so it is worth taking the time to get to a good vantage shot, uh, point and not just take like pot shots at it from a distance uh, because it will be worth it in the long run just another random tip but if you go to shoot an arrow and you change your mind you can simply right click to cancel the uh, bow shot the other thing to say is later on in the game when you have multiple types of arrows if you want to select a different one from your inventory to shoot just right click the arrow that you want to wield and that'll be the one that you shoot next time you draw your bow back now whilst that exploring it's worth taking your hammer with you and enough wood that you can make up a workbench particularly if you find a structure like this so these right here are made from core wood so by destroying all of these things these little pole right here there we go when i pick this up you'll see that boom we have got ourselves some core wood. You also find stones here as well, worth picking them up. But the core wood is going to unlock a load of new build pieces for you, which is quite cool. And it'll also unlock some more furniture items for you, like the sitting log, which adds comfort. Uh, once you've upgraded your workbench, it'll actually upgrade more. Um, there'll be more recipes available to you, I should say. So uh, yeah, worth mentioning as well. Now, while we're here and our workbench is placed down, we just as well destroy all this other wood. It gets a very quick and very easy wood while we're here. So the next thing you want to do for our food is place some cooking stations down in order to cook food and get better HP and stamina from food. So a uh, cooking station right here, you can see it takes two wood. If we go up to our fire, you have to place it over a fire, but you can actually have several all on one fire. Now, uh, I like to have about five on each fire. So let's see if we can get this here. So one, two, there's three, number four, just about. It's kind of a little tricky, a little fiddly, get them in. And number five was there. There we go. That should work just fine. And now we can put food on. The reason I like five is because you get two items cooked per stand, and uh, then you've got 10 cooking at a time. Just makes the maths kind of easy for you. So as you can see in my hotbar here, we have three types of raw meat already, being the deer meat, the boar meat, and also the necktail. Now, if I just go ahead and look at a cooking stand and press E to cook an item, you'll see that straight away there, it took the boar meat by default. So it does that automatically if you do that. Um, but what we can do, if we look at the cooking stand and press number five, is there we go we've put two deer meat on that one and if we look and uh, attach number seven here press that twice then we attach the neck meat onto that one and of course uh, then if you just press e again it goes back to being the boar meat so if you want to cook something specific that is how you do it now we're going to wait here because once this stuff is cooked and there we go it's starting to cook already we need to take that off and uh, pick it up because if you leave it on there for too long oh there's a boar whoa <laughs> where did he come from um oh my goodness okay um Right, so basically, guys, you need to take cooked food off the stands um, because otherwise um, it will basically uh, burn. Now, sorry, this has really caught me unawares. We've got a rally of the forest here with the Eichler. So what I'm going to do is wield my axe, probably the best way to deal with these guys. This is really useful early on because what it means is loads of neck and boar are going to come and attack us, as you can see here. But that means, of course, we can get a lot of good materials from them. So I'm going to try and pick all this stuff up right now. 
Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm trying to do like three things at once. So if you get this happen to you early on in your game, which as you can see is of course possible, um, don't be alarmed by it, okay? It's not anything too terrible. And in fact, it will be quite useful to you because you are going to get yourself a lot of meat and resources that basically the neck and the boar drop. And uh, that can be quite useful. Now, I'm not sure the exact time that this uh, will last for, by the way, this, this particular event in Valheim. Um, I will put the time on screen for you guys right now, though. I think it's like maybe a minute, a minute and a half, something like that. Instantly on the mini map right there, you can see the radius of effect for this event. So you'll know roughly where these mobs are going to be if you're looking for them when you're running around and trying to kill them. And there we go. It says the creatures are calming down and they all sort of run off from that. Uh, when that happens. So uh, yeah, it only lasts a little time there, but uh, just basically don't be alarmed by it. And with all the fun that happened during that event, I did unfortunately burn some stuff and ended up with some coal, which is not overly useful to us just yet, but it will be used later on. So it's not the end of the world, uh, but I was, as you can tell, a bit preoccupied and a bit surprised there by that raid. But the good news is we did manage to get a good amount of cooked meat out of this as well. And obviously we can cook up the rest of this later on. Um, but as you can see here, these foods are all HP foods shown by the red fork there. So the fork next to the food gives you a quick overview as to what it is. So this red means it's mostly HP. The white one next to the mushroom means it's balanced. And the yellowish one there next to the raspberries means it's more for stamina. So at the moment, the most health we can get here, we got seven from the raspberries, we got 15 from the mushrooms. Compare that to the neck tail, we get 25. The boar gives us 30 and the deer meat 35. So you can get a lot more HP out of these and some of them have reasonable amount of stamina, but they are, as you can see here, more HP food. So this is gonna be very useful to us in the fight against Ikthor and as we're progressing through the game to give us the extra HP and stamina. So the dad jokes are of course coming guys, but before that, I just want to say what a perfect start to the Valheim Guide season one. We got ourselves a nice base set up and we got a bed there of course to sleep through the nights and we got some decent food stuff going on, which was the goal for today's episode. Now, if you've made it this far into the episode, then please do consider liking and subscribing and if you're feeling really crazy go ahead and turn on that notification bell for more episodes in this series but for now guys i just want to say thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time what does Ikthra say when he gets scared oh dear god which valheim boss is the oldest the elder which valheim mobs tell the worst stories boars when the valheim developers added that informational raven to the game they said that is a huge improvement why was thor avoiding his brother he owed in money why didn't thor want to introduce his other brother he was low-key embarrassed.